Hey everybody, welcome to Jay and Jay on Jazz, powered by Jazzwire. This is Jeff, who is definitely afraid of jellyfish. I am deathly afraid of jellyfish, and this is James, who's offended by grape jelly. Apparently, there's other stuff that could be better used. Is that right? It's boring. It's 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 uninspired, in my opinion. So, there we have it. Uninspired. I'm scared of grape jelly. I'm scared of grape jelly. So there it is. <laughs> Well, now, James wants to talk about swing. I don't know what the big deal is about this swing you talk about, James, but uh, why don't you make your case for us? Everyone that out there in the world that knows me is either saying, whatever James is about to say I agree with, or there's buddies of mine that are going to roll their eyes and go, oh, gosh, here he goes again, right? All right, so I'm going to pose a question to you, Jeff, and, and also, I guess, out there in the world. So I, I was thinking, is... Is swing important all the time at, at, when you're playing jazz or music that's connected to jazz? So the thing that I'm thinking about is way back in my past, I was I was very young, playing in a group in school, and we were playing Jobim tunes. I love I love Brazilian music. I love all that stuff, right? And I don't even remember what tune it was, but it was a great one because it's a it's a Tom Jobim tune. And when I was improvising. I wasn't changing the kind of language that I was playing. Uh, and I also wasn't changing my feel. I was playing with a pretty swinging feel. Um, it wasn't like, you know, Duke Ellington swing, but my lines had swing. So just to kind of give you a sense of what I'm talking about, I'll play a chorus of a, of a I'll just play a, a, about eight bars of a Joby melody, and then I'll play 16 bars of a tune, and I'll try to, to demonstrate what I'm talking about. Yeah, James, I, I hear it. So I guess my question is, is that wrong? I mean, I was told that's a faux pas. And if it is, guilty is charged. So I don't know, Jeff, what do you, what do you think about that? Well, I, I can go two different ways. Like to me, I love embracing um, different styles and different feels. Inside Jazzwire this week, the blue community was working on Con Elma, the great Dizzy Gillespie tune, and we were doing it 12-8 Afro-Cuban. Now you can swing over 12-8 Afro groove, but to me, there is so much amazing possibility by playing legit Afro-Cuban African rhythms. Totally so I love doing that, but the sound of swinging over top is fantastic. Now one of my favorite albums of all time is called Cannonball's Bossa Nova. It's Cannonball Adderley with Sergio Mendez and all these great Brazilian musicians. And Cannonball is just playing the bejesus out of some bebop over this great Brazilian sound. Is it traditional Brazilian? No. Cannonball's from Fort Lauderdale. He swings and it sounds <laughs> great, right? So right. I feel like it can work. And that's what I heard you play a minute ago. Like you're playing, you're, you're walking into a room confident with who you are, saying what you want to say. And it works. Well, I don't want anyone to think I'm saying, you know, we shouldn't respect those other genres. I mean, I, I love Brazilian music so much. You know, I'm a, I'm a fan of so many of those players, and I've studied a lot of that music. I mean, if you if you want to get into Brazilian music, man, check out the all the all that great Milton Banana Trio stuff. It's it's super happening, um, and so you should be a student of those different approaches to to that music. But yeah, I guess at my core, I'm always going to have a little bit of that swing in my playing. And, uh, and and so I, I want to be able to have access to that because I'm an American jazz musician. That's that's what I do. That's who I am, you know. So, but totally, we should be respecting other other genres and other approaches. Um, I guess my one little pushback would be: you're right about the Afro-Cuban thing. Absolutely, I would say 
go check out Dizzy Gillespie's uh, live versions of Chega de Sadage, of No More Blues. There's some great live ones out there with his band with, with James Moody and, and Christian White um, and, uh, and Kenny Barron on piano. And just kind of like that cannonball thing, too. They're, they're swinging over top of this. Is it authentic Brazilian? Yep. Nope. It's, it's not, but it's, it's so great. Anyway, that, that was, I've been thinking about that the last couple of weeks, just reliving that experience all those years ago. So, well, and it's interesting, you know, I think of all the great ECM records, that ECM record label that's famous for not having, you know, traditionally a ton of swing on there. I grew up in Western Canada in the 70s and 80s and the music that was going on there, lots of ECM stuff. So Keith Jarrett's European Quartet with Jan Garbrick on saxophone. And Matt, I love that stuff. It's not swinging. It's a it's. There's some classical elements, there's folk elements, there's a lot of funk, but a lot of the funk that swings, right? There's still that connection to the African and African-American experience that very often has that lilt in there. I was watching a show last night on TV and the meters came on. Ooh, hey, Pocky yeah. Way. And it's like, man, I, like I just jumped up like, man, right? Uh, and that, that has a swing to it. Is it swing music? No. So, you know, inside Jazzwire, there was an interesting conversation. A really, really excellent uh, Canadian sax player um, has been working on Pick Up the Pieces, that cool average white band tune. <laughs> And um, the conversation was going on like, well, those, those are straight 16ths. Da -ba -da -da, da -ba -da -da. And I was playing it a little slower than they play it. Um, to me, there's that swinging. There's a shuffle in there. When you listen to the intro guitar part, it's cool. So somebody posted a Phil Woods, uh, Phil Woods, Phil Collins, like Genesis Phil Collins, mm -hmm. Phil Collins big band playing this and they were really shuffling it. So it was really had that lilt to it. The average white band to me, it's straighter, but it's still swinging. And so that's the difference between um, someone sounding like a pro and someone whose feel is maybe a little wooden sounding. That ability to bring in 3% of swing, 17% swing, having that accessible to us. And that's what the great studio musicians like Michael Brecker or Dave Sanborn, could do um, is they had that jazz language and they could bring that feel and that groove when necessary. So I think, you know, I'm with you. I think, um, yes, we want to learn how to swing as if we're playing with Duke Ellington, but I think uh, that accent to our language is really, really important. Yeah. I, think, I think it gets used a lot more than people understand. I think that's right. You know, and it's, I was, it's interesting, like, I've been fortunate to play uh, play this music in Europe a, a number of times, and my most recent trip where I got to play with musicians was uh, like like October of 2016. So quite a ways uh, back at this point, and I was at a jam session in Munich at the very famous jazz club Unterfart, and I met this drummer uh, who I'll give a shout out to here. His name's Guido Mai, um, a great great German drummer who lives in Munich. And we, we connected immediately um, because, you know, like, like you were saying, Jeff, the ECM stuff is, is, was a, a huge thing in different parts of the world. A lot of European musicians, a lot of European influences, um, and it, it wasn't always spang-a-lang or very often wasn't, right? And the, the group that had been playing to open up the session was playing a lot of that stuff. And they were, I think they were maybe from Switzerland, and they were great. It was awesome stuff. The session opens up. And me and this piano player from Philly, Tim Bray, were among the first to jump up. And Guido jumps up to play, and I never met him. And I, I, I think he said something along the lines of, can, can we swing? And I'm thinking, well, that's what I hope we can do. And he was tipping so hard. And I'm thinking, like, uh -huh. this feels like I'm back in Pittsburgh. Like, this cat is putting it right where it's supposed to be. Funny enough, we get done with playing those tunes, go back to the bar having a drink, and he tours with Pee Wee Ellis uh, and all those great funk musicians like Maceo and Fred Wesley and those guys. And the bass player that always goes out with Pee Wee and Fred is my man Dwayne Dolphin from Pittsburgh. And he says, Pittsburgh, Dwayne Dolphin. And I was talking to Dwayne. He says, 
Guido's got the pocket that I want him to have. So just, it was a real, it got me thinking about, it doesn't matter what country you're from. It doesn't, and none of this is about that, but it is a sort of a scale of like, where is the swing? How much does there need to be? And, you know, for someone like, like him to get up and, and really lay that down, it was really cool to hear somebody come at it from like that East Coast US vibe, really aggressive. I don't know, it just, it was a cool moment and it really taught me, man, if you're listening to this music with open ears, you can find that that sound no matter where you're from, so. Yep, I, I totally agree with that. That, yeah, that is fantastic. And, you know, talking about someone who was swinging so hard, like you said, in an American kind of style, a German person, right? There was ECM music going on, but yet they tour with, you know, playing with funk group, right? Pee Wee Ellis and people like that. So, so cool. Yeah. It all it all comes together. Yeah, that's exactly it. And I love this conversation because it's just beyond this tacit thing, like here's a swing tune, we'll put the iReal Pro on the swing feel and let's play. It's a lot deeper than that, right? Like what kind of swing feels? Is this East Coast or West Coast? Are you, you know, how are you articulating? When I play with you, James, it's different than when I play with Ingrid Jensen. Not better and worse, two different voices articulate differently. So I love that because I get to try to now fit in and swing a little differently with one person versus the next person. It's really, really cool. And this is a deep conversation and, uh, you know, good, good conversations to have. And I hope people out there are hearing this and enjoying it. And speaking of good conversations, I hope you guys come in, check out Jazzwire, the free trial. You can come in for one week, really observe what we're doing, see all the great work that's going on and these kinds of conversations numerous times a day. So uh, I hope we'll uh, see you inside there. James, man, thank you for bringing up this topic. I love it. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. I hope you all got something out of it. And it's okay to disagree with us. Like, leave us some comments. It'd be great to hear if, if you think I'm way off the mark or whatever. That's what's beautiful about this music and beautiful about Jazzwire is that we get to talk about deep things. And sometimes we agree and sometimes we don't. But that's where it is, man. Thanks for letting me talk about that, Jeff. Oh, man, no, people are free to disagree with you. Just to be straight, don't disagree with me because I have a very fragile ego. Yeah. So uh, yeah. now, that we, now that we got that straight, we're uh, good to go. Okay, you take care of yourself, All right, Jeff. everybody. <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> take care of yourself. Take care, y'all. <laughs>